Excuse me. So, last time on A Crown of Cold Iron, uh, our intrepid uh, fey gumshoes, <laughs> or fey adjacent, uh, have been on the trail of a serial arsonist uh, who has uh, apparently been using supernatural fire uh, to attack religious sites around the town of Queensboro. Uh, the nature of the attacks uh, seems intended to cast suspicion on the Solanus. Uh, because of that connection, Lieutenant Davis uh, enlisted Lexi, who enlisted the rest of you, uh, to try and get to the bottom of what's really going on. Uh, what you have found is, I think, fair to say, a confusing web of interconnected individuals and religions. Uh, you've been on the trail of mysterious uh, hooded figures uh, who are using some kind of fire magic. Uh, you are following up currently uh, on a group called the Radiant Dawn. Uh, and during your visit, uh, one of the new members uh, who Auric had been sent to investigate acted a little odd. And so you all decided to stalk this poor girl uh, across the whole town all day long. And now you all are lurking outside of her apartment, looking in the window. Uh, except uh, some of the more observant among you just noticed that the street around you seems to have changed. Uh, you were sitting on a fairly standard uh, sort of downtown apartment block. Uh, and now it's weird. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it seems like some of the, the street lights haven't just gone away, but have actually been integrated into uh, towering trees that are sweeping up overhead. Uh, many of the lights have disappeared. And the last thing you heard was stomp, stomp, stomp. <laughs> Uh, as some massive, uh, I actually looked at the word, uh, caprine creature uh, has uh, apparently walked down the alley behind you all. Uh, so I'm going to have you all roll for initiative. Woo! Uh, that's what I figured. 14. Eight. Oh, wait, no, 13. <laughs> wait. No, oh, 14. Cyrus. I got the 13. <laughs> ah. I saw a 14 on my screen and the 13 on her screen, and I was like, what's going on? Uh, and what did Zyra get? Seven. Seven. All right. Can I write those in chat? What? Can I write those in chat? Sure. So Auric 14. 13. <clears throat> My window is just slightly like too small, and so I couldn't see everything. <laughs> all right, so you all were sitting in Pokey, uh, the faithful sedan, looking through this window, and the area around you, you have just a moment to notice, it seems to have been subsumed into some kind of fetid, swampish jungle. There is a rotting, almost like sulfurous uh, quality to the air. And you can see sort of shadows moving across the, the scant light that has remained. And we'll... I'll have you all make appropriate checks to find out more about that as your turns come up. So, top of the order, first thing that happens, uh, Auric, roll 1d4. Small dice are good. I got a three. A three, okay. Um, good to know. So, <laughs> Here's, here's what you can see from where you're at. Uh, you are, I've got you in the rear driver's side seat of Pokey. Um, the 
the buildings that were rising up on either side now seem to have been almost like in places sort of grown over with this swampy vegetation uh, and in other places just like absorbed into it. You've heard these, you've heard what sounds like multiple creatures behind you and looking out ahead, you see several more sort of rapidly approaching the building where you were watching Beery. Uh, you all were watching at a pretty good distance, uh, essentially across like a large street. You're almost, you're about 150 feet away from the window you were watching. So, uh, I, and I'll give you more information once you decide what you're, how you would like to progress. Information from where I am, what these creatures are. Uh, make a perception check. Oh, good. I'm great at those. <laughs> hey, 16. Oh, my uh, God. Make an additional perception check, because you're rolling oh. at disadvantage. Oh. How about a six? <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you do gather one very important piece of information. Uh, the This sort of thick quality of the air... Uh, it's not just a a tactile thing. It literally, you can't see more than about 20-ish feet away from you. Uh, once it gets much further out, everything is just kind of blurs. Uh, you do see, it looks like there are two humanoid-sized creatures, sized and shaped creatures, uh, beh like directly behind the vehicle, about 10 or 15 feet. Oh, great. Okay. And you said there were some ahead moving towards the apartment? Yes. You just saw them as like flickers as they ran past the vehicle or they, they clopped. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I'm assuming that A, the windows are rolled up, but B, Pokey is an old car. Uh, I am I also mean, assuming they're rolled up. No. I mean, I guess it depends on the year, but <laughs> I, I pick, see, I picture Pokey as Pokey original, oh, as, your... as, as my Pokey, and Pokey was a 99 Toyota Camry and had power windows. Okay, so I can't just crank it down and jump out the but window. But they did get stuck every once in a while. We had some great problems with that. <laughs> well, I guess I can do it the normal person way, open the car door <laughs> and step out. Uh, as you step out, make a dexterity saving throw. Really? Six. Uh, as you step out of the vehicle, uh, the that thick fog, you realize the car had been partially protecting you from it. As you move into it, that sulfur scent is so thick. You just feel like you're at the bottom of a compost bin. Mm. Um just this disgusting earthiness to it and as you step out the the fog or mist in the air like brushes across you and you're illuminated with this sort of um orange flickering ghost light okay um in that case i am moving my full 30 foot speed Diagonally away from the car, towards but not directly towards the apartment. All right. That shouldn't be any trouble. It would be funny if I treated getting out of Pokey as as a movement. Well, as as dismounting, but that that doesn't seem quite fair. <laughs> Thematically fun, uh, <laughs> game accurate, not precisely. Not right. precisely. Uh, so kind of from where you're you're standing, uh, you're still mostly seeing sort of flickering shapes. Um, you're a little bit further away from them now, but you can definitely see two figures uh, moving towards Pokey uh, and more out ahead of you. Also, you narrowly avoided putting your foot in uh, what seems to be sections of the road that have slipped into like a, a tar 
like consistency. Uh, almost yeah. like it's trying to find the halfway between Blacktop and Swamp. Uh, but you manage to, to walk around it without much trouble. Okay. Then... Uh... As my action, 30 feet diagonal again, this time away from the apartment and Pokey, I will cast Minor Illusion, the sound of a woman screaming. All right. I will create a little token for your random screen. I don't know that these things are hostile, but I suspect they are. And so I don't want to be the first one to attack, but I also don't want them to keep going. <laughs> so uh, what is your spell save, DC? Uh, 15. All right, let's see how they do. All right. Uh, you see very distinctly, uh, even through the fog, one of the figures, uh, the closest one, definitely like fully turns around and is now like trying to figure out what's off in that direction. I'll go ahead and roll one more. Just seeing how smart they are. Hopefully not very. Yeah, hopefully not very, but who knows? All right, uh, that's the only one that you managed to sort of distract with that. All right, All right. anything else? Uh, no, because my only bonus action would light me up. <laughs> I mean, if it if it makes you feel any better, you are literally like glowing with this flickering sulfurous ghost light. Okay, well, in that case, I will go ahead and uh, use my my wand to cast Flame Blade. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so all it takes is a flicker of your draconic fire, and this uh, this flame touched wand uh, grows warm in your hand. All the runes ignite, and it cascades down from where you're touching it. And the energy pushes through the runes and then out the end, uh, forming a coherent blade of flame that uh, is actually kind of burning through the uh, through some of the, the gas around you. You're highly visible, but also you have a flame sword. <laughs> All right, uh, Cyrus, you are up. All right, so do you say we can see the little shapes at all, or really just the two big ones? Uh, there's there's two like large humanoid size uh, creatures back behind Pokey, and there's sort of an indeterminate number out ahead of you between you and the apartment. Okay. Are they bunched at all? Uh, not really. They seem to have been sort of capering. Um, okay. You wouldn't be able to see yet exactly what it is, but Oric would be able to tell. They it looks like they were avoiding the sort of big swampy tar patches. The two behind you are next to each other, but the ones in front are not. <laughs> all right well let me get out of pokey all right uh as you open the door make a dexterity saving throw nine <laughs> Uh, you also, as you, you step out, the, uh, the, the foggy air clings to you and you are 
partially illuminated with flickering ghostly light. How did that happen? Oh. You have a plus six and you rolled a nine total. Oh. It was on the 15 and then... Yep. The dice do be like that sometimes. No. No. It be like that sometimes. All right. Magic and painful. Cyrus feeling. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. So one of the big ones got distracted by the scream. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can I hold a? Can I hold a shot to trigger on them doing something aggressive? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, would you like, so you'll still have your movement and bonus action. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm hexing the one that was not distracted. All right. Do you want one behind you or ahead of you? I want to. I want to hex the big one that didn't look at Oryx illusion. Can we tell that the ones in front are any differently sized, or do we just not know because they were just flickers? They were just flickers. Uh, you get the impression that they're of similar size, uh, but uh, no, Oryx rolled real bad. Uh, <laughs> you might discover more with. Actually, yeah, I'll have uh, Cyrus roll a, a perception check. Am I at disadvantage? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Uh, you also do not gather anything new. Okay. They flickered. Yep. Is that your turn? All right. So oh, no. I'm, I'm hexing the one that didn't look at the illusion. I'm moving my 30 feet away from Pokey towards the apartment and I am I am shouting at them in Sylvan uh, you do not belong here this place is protected retire from the field now Mm. there is no response All right. Uh, that brings us, man. Uh, y'all didn't roll great for initiative, but they rolled worse. So it is Lexi. Cyrus <laughs> still in the car. Okay. I, I had an instinct of revving Pokey and running things over, but Joe reminded me of the tar pits. So um, <laughs> Pokey's going to stay put for now. Ah. It would have been amazing. It would have been really funny. I wanted to. I wanted to do. <laughs> well, well, here's what I'll say. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. Um, you might not have noticed. Tar. Yeah. You, At you... disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just Zyra, Zyra might be driving the car. <laughs> Like the theme of this game. Ah, is Zyra wants to drive. I rolled a nat one. Oh. You are seventeen. You are not able to see much past the car. Uh, yeah. I will say, just for the sake of you not having to non-meta harm yourself, uh, you mm-hmm. did, I think, see Oric move around one of the patches as he moved. So you're at least vaguely aware there might be something out there on the ground that might be harmful to the car. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the headlights... Well, how about that? I would probably start off by turning on the headlights and not being able to see Jack squat would want to try <laughs> more work. <laughs> Lexi is a safe driver. <laughs> Who wants to run over Faye? I mean, they're on our turn. They, they're the ones that decided to come here. Got to do what you got to do to protect, protect your home turf. All right, so I'm going to get out of the car then. 
All right, dexterity check. Great. Dexterity, or dexterity check? save. Dexterity save. Okay. I'm going to rage too. So should I roll that before I rage or after? Uh, it won't matter either way. Okay. Good to know. That's, that's, is that not the right one? Oh, no, you're right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I rolled a 10. Uh, you also, as you get out, you, you sort of brush up against this. Uh, this this fog and your your sort of upper torso is just illuminated um it it's interesting you're probably more conscious of the difference uh this distinctly has a more almost like a gas flame quality to it um in terms of color and sort of effect, it's not that different from what you've seen a few times when you rage. Uh, mm-hmm. But up close, there's definitely more of like a like a burning propane kind of vibe to this this ghost fire that is illuminating you. Okay. okay. Um. So how far away are these guys? There are two behind Pokey that are about 30 feet away. Okay. Um, and you see sort of indistinct shapes moving around uh, between 70 and 100 feet ahead of you. Okay. You're at least close well, enough. You can see Auric because he's completely lit up with his... Right. Uh, well, actually, you can see everyone. Everyone has failed their save so far. So you can see all your teammates. So that's good. Great. Um, so I think I'll probably go for the ones behind us since they're closer. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. I need to equip. There we go. Raging. And so I'm going to then go up to the one that's closest to me that I can see and take a giant whack at it with my brewer's mallet. Excellent. Oh man. Okay, well, it's an unnatural 20. All right. Uh, it was almost a nat 20. So, that would have been uh, so as you run up to this creature with your mallet, uh, you notice two things. Um, this creature I mean, is definitely not human. That, that tracks. Uh, as you get closer, it looks there, there is a distinctly goat like quality to this creature um, it has like furry matted uh, haunches like a like a goat uh, with dark fur uh, and then it has a gray sort of mottled uh, upper torso that's bare of anything uh, it has sort of uh, very inhuman hands with that end in big talons, um, and it looks—I don't know—it looks weird. Okay. And it smells awful. Fantastic. This this smell of this like fog out here, this sulfurousness, is overpowering this close uh so you you bring your mallet uh go ahead and roll damage okay i was gonna say if there's anyone who's no who knows how to deal with really disgusting smells it's the woman who owns and runs a bar (laughs) full of drug people (laughs) all right let's see here what we got we got 13 damage all right 13 you beat the crap out of this thing Uh, it does not quite like explode in one hit but you literally hit it so hard uh your your mallet almost there's just almost no resistance there's just a cascade of crunches uh and quite literally you knock a a cloud of this disgusting gas out of it as you smash into it all right all right, Zyra, your turn. Mm. Can I roll a perception to see if I can determine where the tar pits are? 
Uh, yes. Oh, I don't know where the targets are. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Uh, so I'll say this. You, you don't gain much additional information about the area. Mm. Uh, you are able to see where two of the tar pits are. One has sort of formed a small patch over to your left, uh, just behind where Auric is standing. Uh, and then there's another one back behind the vehicle, uh, sort of to the southwest. There's a much larger patch back there. Uh, there's about 50 feet of clearance. Uh, although at this point you do have uh, Lexi, you have Lexi behind you and Cyrus ahead of you. I can still see a, a situation in which Cyrus could jump on top of the car. <laughs> oh. I mean, he he would be more easy to like get around. But once you get past him, there could be more of these pits that you can't see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or at least if you jump on it, it will be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'm going to um, drive the car. You're going to drive my car? All right. I, I presume okay. it's okay. I'm going to assume it's a serious matter and I drive the car forward. All right, I swap you into the driver's seat. Yeah, I said. <laughs> I'm impressed with your acrobatics of getting over the um, the emergency brake. It's very easy. <laughs> so, I mean, I would assume that the car can easily go, I mean, maybe a hundred foot movement speed. <laughs> it does not have an H hat player. <laughs> the the, the blue H hat is fine. <laughs> Nobody knows which phone to either. check. We find that separately. <laughs> uh, so what is your what is your goal in moving the car? Like, I what are to, you wanting to do with it? I want to move towards the flickering things in the front and not hit Cyrus and not run into a tar pit. All right. Uh, oh, goodness. What kind of check is this? All right. Here's how we're going to do it. Uh, <clears throat> um, I'm going to have you make an attack roll. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it your, your normal attack because you're, you're presumably moderately proficient in a car. Uh, make an attack roll but if it is if you miss by more than five uh instead of hitting one of these figures ahead of you uh you are going to find one of the tar pits with the vehicle okay i don't know what you mean by make an attack roll oh, i don't uh it would just be like do you have like a rapier uh no i have a dagger 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 yeah. works okay 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 cool 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 and a crossbow yeah, either would either would work. Uh, it's an eleven. Eleven is exactly what you needed. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm also gonna have Cyrus roll a dexterity saving throw with advantage. <laughs> Hold tight. If you roll just right, you'll land on the car. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, would you rather land safe in safety or land on the car? Uh, safety. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> here's how this wild series of events goes. Uh, so, Zyra, you, you hop in the driver's seat. Um, Cyrus, you have just a moment's notice of like, the sound of the car just changed and you don't even like have time to turn around just some instinct tells you and you fling yourself one of the one of the poles that was holding up the traffic lights uh and the street lights has turned in has been absorbed into this giant swampish tree 
uh, you just make this like almost supernaturally explosive leap and cling to the side of this tree as uh, Zyra and Pokey go squealing past. Uh, from your perspective, you, you just see the taillights disappear back into the mist, and then you hear thud. <laughs> uh, you have entirely smeared one of these creatures across the front of Pokey. It is, Man, there's going to be a lot to wash off. It is entirely dead. <laughs> it just does not have defenses capable of withstanding a full-size sedan. Just <laughs> Does that count as my action? Um, I would say you still have a bonus action. Oh, okay, cool. Then I, I don't have any fun ones. Uh, I'm going to um, start singing. Actually, no, my phone hooked up, and so I changed the music, and I start playing um, uh, Barracuda by heart. Um, <laughs> I was thinking that or Lowrider. Yeah, um, and uh, an inspiration, uh, a bardic inspiration ends up with Cyrus. All right. It just shoots out as he jumps out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I think that maybe Cyrus, you turn just in time to see Zyra go like, <laughs> and just. So, we're we're gonna go with that. All right, uh, I'm gonna drop one of the creatures off of the initiative because he's dead. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> so that, was a that happened. <laughs> uh, so one of the creatures uh, yeah. was confused by the minor illusion and, and you hear it kind of clopping off or if you're close enough you can see it kind of <sighs> and uh, you can kind of see it like hunched over and like searching around uh, and not finding anything it completely wastes its turn uh, the next one um, let's see. It's going to make a perception check, which it is not great at. It rolls a natural one. Uh, it is cartoonishly trying to figure out where Cyrus just went. It was <laughs> planning to go after him, and then he, like, vanished when the car peeled by, and it's, like, comically, like, searching around the tree, and you're like holding on to the tree about 10 feet up in the air as this thing is is underneath you. Uh, the next one uh, is the one that was hexed. Uh, it's going to make a wisdom save. It is having a, a one goat battle against fear because it just saw one of its compatriots run over. It got a six. Uh, it's not quite ready to like full blown run away, but it is definitely not going to stay any closer to Pokey than it needs to. So it's going to kind of take a circuitous route and loop away from Pokey and towards the apartment. <clears throat> That leaves the two that are next to Lexi. Um, they are not smart. Uh, they're not even going to bother trying to get flanking. Uh, the one that you hit, uh, it actually like, and where where you have like smashed it, and you've opened up like shards of bone are poking through and it just looks awful from these new vents in its body it expels more of this gas uh, you need to make a constitution saving throw ten uh, you are poisoned uh, and while you are poisoned in this way 
Uh, you can take either an action or a bonus action, but not both, and you can't take reactions. Question, how does her uh, resistance to poison affect that? Is that just because of damage? Because rage. It, it only affects damage. Okay. Uh, okay. You do gather that... Well, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily know that. It is, it is exuding this cloud. The effect is almost more... Like you're poisoned, but really it's it's a nauseating effect. Like it is so gross that it is pushing past even your legendary uh, tavern keeper <laughs> uh, endurance. Uh, this is the worst thing you've ever smelled. Uh, yeah. If you were um, able to s step away just a little bit, you might feel better. Okay. How much damage did it do? Uh, I didn't actually do any damage, so okay. that's that's the good news. Okay, uh, so I, I don't have to like reduce any hit points or anything like that. No, I, I missed part of what you were saying. Oh, okay. sorry. Uh, the next one is going to attack. Uh, wow, it rolled real good. It got a fifteen. I have fifteen armor. Uh, so that'll hit. Okay. Oops. It'll help if I open character sheets. Uh, so it hits. It literally does uh, three points of damage, so one point of damage after your ragingness. Uh, and it's going to attack again. It's an 18 to hit. Uh, but it's only going to do two damage after your ragingness. So the first creature exudes this aura, and there's just this slight moment of like... <coughs> And this this mist feeling filling the air around you even thicker, and while you're distracted for just a second, uh, the other goat creature uh, comes running up through your blind spot and slashes with these gross claws and actually bites you, um, and it it hits uh, past this sort of gaslight around you. Um, underneath that is still that amber light and when it hits it, it can't quite get there like it wants to, but you can feel sharp teeth. These are, <clears throat> these are not placid herbivore teeth. This right. is a something that rends and tears and eats flesh. Yes. Uh, that is all of them. Do I still have my held shot, or did dodging Pokey use that use up my reaction? Uh, you specifically specified a hostile action. Yeah, I would say you could you could see, but you'd be attacking with disadvantage. But you might as well use it. Okay. For reference, you're about 50 or 60 feet from Lexi. Okay. Uh, 10. Uh, 10 is just barely going to miss. Uh, Auric, you're far enough out. You can see something larger uh, moving out in the mist. And uh, it suddenly becomes much clearer because you you can hear this massive like thud, 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 thud. and you see this massive shape like moving through the air and closer to the apartment. So now there is okay. a uh, actually it would it would be jumping into sight range for uh, Lexi. You see a 10, 12 foot tall, uh, massive goat-esque creature, uh, like Air Jordan leap, like 20 feet. You, you don't see the start of the jump because of the fog. You just see it mm. like come down into the headlights from, from Pokey. Um, it is like visibly sweating this misty fog off of its body more of it anyway 
All right. Uh, at the top of the initiative, uh, everyone make a religion or arcana check. Ten Arcana. Four Religion. Twenty-one Arcana. Twenty-two Religion. All right. Uh, so <laughs> the combat crew uh, is is distracted by their fighting. Um, uh, Cyrus and Lexi, not Lexi, Cyrus and uh, Zyra, you both you realize two things. The first, I mean, probably, probably Oric and Lexi have already come to this conclusion, uh, but are not necessarily in a place to think it out. This seems like a demand, um, like what you've experienced before, uh, where Cyrus and Zyra kind of push through. It is of a distinctly different quality than anything you've encountered before. And in fact, it doesn't seem like fey magic. You're getting a feel at this point for what fairy magic feels like. There is a quite literally... Magic is always sort of unearthly, otherworldly, but even the most vicious and brutal and ugly parts of fairy still have a little bit of that glitter and glimmer and glamour quality to it. Um, the most brutish troll of fairy uh, still has a, a little bit of that dream and illusion wrapped around it. This feels wrong. This doesn't feel like fey magic at all. All right. Uh, and now, uh, Cyrus, roll a 1d4. two two all right good to know so the flickering sort of uh gas fire that has been illuminating you all it's almost like there's a breeze uh it doesn't move the cloud but it's almost like the cloud of this mist sort of uh sinuously uh, swirls through the air and you feel like there's something different about it now and Auric uh, gets to find that out firsthand. Uh, Auric at the top of your turn you're no longer illuminated but you need to make a wisdom saving throw oh fun Woohoo. how's a 13 do uh, 13 does it uh, for just a minute what is something that Auric is very afraid of? Uh, bats. All right. Uh, for just a second, you would almost swear that swooping through the mist around you are not just like, not just bats, gigantic fey bats from the depths of winter. Uh, bats that would swoop down and carry off whole livestock or children. Um, they were <laughs> they were the the brutish and and horrifying neighbors uh, that your uh, probably not your parents, but some older figure in your community would threaten you if you're uh, if you weren't behaving. Uh, these these creatures would swoop down and carry you off. And for just a second, you see them in the mist. And then, no, why would they be here? That's that's not right. And you're fine. So what would you like okay. to do? Uh, how many creatures do I see between me and the apartment? Or closer to the apartment than me, I should say. Uh, approximately, really just two. There's one is now off to the side trying to figure out where that illusory voice came from. One has gotten behind you a little bit because it's trying to hunt around this, this tree slash post for Cyrus. Uh, <laughs> Zyra just road killed one. Uh, so really there's one small one and this large creature uh, 
in pretty much a straight line between you and the apartment. Okay. I am going to uh, quicken cast magic missile as a second level spell. So two going to the one that seems to be still heading to the apartment, the one little one, and two going to the big one. All right. That'll be a bunch of D4s. Three damage for the first. No, four damage for the first one. Gonna add one, Joe. All right. Five damage on the second. All right. Three on the third. Oh, whoops. Hold on. I was doing it wrong. Okay, three on the third. And four on the fourth. Four on the fourth. Uh, the one that is, it's really close to the building at this point. Um, and it is not looking at all. <laughs> and the bolts just hit it in the back. And uh, much like when the Brewer's Mallet hit, uh, you see them like shear through it. And uh, there's some, there's a fresh bit of gas now leaking from this wound in this creature uh the larger creature takes the hits and kind of <laughs> uh but continues to move forward well that's unfortunate <laughs> but since that was quick and casted i still have a an action mm -hmm. so i will as an action firebolt at the big one <laughs> Is Firebolt 120 feet? Yes, it is. All right, you are just in range. Um, you are firing through a lot of mist, though, so that's probably going to roll with disadvantage. All right. So that'll be a 24 instead of a 27. Jeez. Uh, yeah, that will hit. Two damage! <laughs> um, Antrips, man. You don't have fire mastery, do you? Not yet. I think that comes later. Um, the bolt hits, and it doesn't budge at all. It doesn't seem to have caused any damage whatsoever. Did I at least make it angry? Uh, you made it angry with the first hit. The second one, it, like, didn't even seem to turn around. I was, should have gone for the small one. Oh, well. I will move my 30 feet closer to the apartment. All right. Uh, make a perception check. Nineteen. All right. Uh, so you roll really well. Uh, you spot a large tar pit out ahead of you. And so you don't run right into it and you don't get stuck at the edge. You are able to sort of angle around and make good use of your movement. Okay. All right. Uh, it is Cyrus's turn. Okay. Who? All right. So if I... If I'm shooting at the ones near Lexi, it's going to be disadvantage again? Uh, yes. There's one much closer that you probably could get advantage against. I, just, like, I want to know if I can get sneak attack on either of the ones on Lexi. Um, you would have disadvantage, and disadvantage always negates sneak attack. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me try this. Is this going to do something weird? Can you all see? Oh, yes, we can. Yeah. Um, but where I, is forward? But I can't tell what anything is. Uh, I will zoom in one second.
Oh, okay. Nope, this is not sustainable. <laughs> uh, when I pull this up, it uh, makes the Zoom stream go crazy. Yeah, we, we, we have the Twitch stream up on mute on our TV, and we suddenly we're like, oh, it's frozen. Yep. Yep. Let me see if there's a better way to do that. <clears throat> is it, is the map on Twitch? Uh, no, but I can make it on Twitch. We could stream that. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing right now, so. <laughs> Hey! All right. So, is this... Hold on. Where... There it is. Are you not subscribed? Me with the uh, thing every single time. So... So, over here is uh, Cyrus sort of clinging to the side of, uh, of this <laughs> pole-turned giant tree. Uh, here's the goatish creature close to him. Uh, here is Lexi engaging the other two. Okay. Your functional sort of like clear line of sight is only probably like this-ish. Uh, and anything out past that starts to get a little fuzzy because of the fog. Okay. Um... <laughs> All right, I guess then I'm going to transfer my hex to the one that's under me and shoot it. All right. I found Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And there's like a smear right here that used to be a creature. <laughs> Alright, so I rolled a 9 total, so I'm using my Bardic Inspiration, and that got me to 12. 12 will do it. Alright. It is an unarmored creature. Uh, 9 damage. Alright. Uh, hold on. Oh. Hold, hold on. Not done. Oh, yeah. It has to make a... It's going to do a whole it bunch takes, of stuff. It takes an additional... So that's 13 damage for the bow and the hex. And, and it gets a 20 on the con save, though. What? It doesn't get to roll against hex. No, no, not hex. Uh, when you use one of Zyra's modes of creation for an attack um, roll, it yep. does that thunderburst. Gotcha. Uh, does it still take damage, like half damage? Oh. Uh, maybe not. No. All right. The con save or take damage. Uh, but you heard it real bad. Should mark which of these are hurt. <clears throat> all right uh so that was bonus action attack would you like to move <clears throat> no all right <laughs> you maintain your position up oh did you roll a wisdom saving throw at the top of your turn? No. Uh, go ahead and roll that. Twelve. Uh, roll... Roll a 1d8. All right, well, this is getting weird, because if I kn knew I failed... I'm not going to mess with your attack, uh, okay. but it might it might force you to move. Oh, uh, okay. 
So it was like it just gets weird of a little like, well, I could have rolled the Bardic Inspiration on that then. Two. Uh, two. All right. Um, honestly, not bad. Uh, what is something that uh, Cyrus is afraid of? Uh, we'll say spiders. Uh, you, for just a mat, for just a moment. Not for just a moment. Sorry, you failed. Uh, coming around the edges of this <clears throat> pole turned tree, you just see countless spindly limbs and glowing dots of eyes and big fangs that just. <clears throat> and you see it coming from both sides. And in a panic, you just leap down and, and go running uh, towards Auric, actually. All right, uh, Lexi, you are up. All right. And your poison means you can only do an action or a move, right? Let's see. I don't know. I mean, I'm right next to them, so right. I don't really need to move. Good, th good thing about barbarians. Once you rage, you don't really need. You don't use that bonus action for much. It's action yeah. or a bonus action. Uh, but you also uh, can move if you would like, which might potentially get you out of the the stuff around you. Or just hit it really hard. Honestly, I think I'm just going to hit it really hard. But make your wisdom save first. Do I have to make a wisdom save first? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay. Ten. Ten. Let's see something about rage. I must be thinking about a berserker. All right. Uh, what is something that Lexi is afraid of? The Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. <laughs> uh, something comes stalking out of the cloud and it has this sort of rounded figure towering over you uh, but it is charred and smoking uh, and it has like burning orange eyes and it opens a mouth and the inside of the mouth is like melted strands of blackened marshmallow and it just <laughs> Uh, roll 1d8. Seven! All right, seven. Let's see. Uh, you're not going to be able to do seven, so we'll send you the other way. Uh, this thing is chasing you through the mist, and you just have to run and run. Okay. Uh, bright side, you're no longer poisoned. Sweet. <laughs> Barbarians surprisingly susceptible to fear. Yeah. I, I think it's berserker barbarians that eventually have like immunity or advantage while they're raging. Mm -hmm. Level oh. 20 Barbarian would not get him much rask because it, he was too afraid for 10 rounds. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, that makes it Zyra's turn. Cool. Um, can I see the map again? Yep. <clears throat> Where's the apartment? Uh, the apartment is dead ahead of you. Uh, so what you're seeing is uh, this larger dark area is the apartment building. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And the sort of 
sketched out area is the apartment as you're seeing it through the window. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Run over the big one! Uh, and just for, for reference on the, the spatial dynamics of this, it is a second floor apartment. Okay. But with the headlights sort of shining, you can actually see that this swampy, earthen, loamy grossness of ground uh, mm -hmm. seems to have almost ramped up to the building. Okay. Um, how far is the apartment and how far is the strange looming creature thing from me? Strange looming creature is 45. Apartment is 70 in a straight line. Okay. Good lord. That's a really handy tool. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cool. Um, I want to, uh, I'm going to start whispering, um, along with my Barracuda thing it's starting to go into the um yeah it's starting to go into the um into the chorus the first chorus and so i'm going to whisper along with it with the words um and force the whisper into the head of this large creature um and and as i'm doing that it's going to effectively uh, um, dissonant whispers the large creature at an upcast. All right. Uh, what saving throw is that? A wisdom 15. Uh, it super fails. Awesome. It takes. One. I have preferences. I find eight plus five is thirteen damage. Thirteen. Um, what do I see happen? And it's got to run from you, right? Oh yes, <laughs> and uh, since it failed, uh. It needs to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Um, this is going to have unintended side side effects. It, maybe I wanted to have moved forward a little bit before. I... <laughs> uh, yeah. When uh, so you're you're whispering this and your your whisper and the the music of the car are amplifying each other. And as this sort of bass beat rolls out uh, from Pokey, it is infused with this sibilant magic. And you see the creature, it's stalking forward. And then you see it. And it turns and it it, it's like it notices you for the first time and then it you see it almost like twitch for a second <sighs> and then it crashes uh, scrabbling into uh, Beery's apartment to get away from you <laughs> great awesome so um, when he started twitching I thought he was about to start Thriller dance. He's like, <laughs> different. That's a that's a different spell. That's Otto's irresistible. Yeah, dance. That's a very different direction. There is a spell for that. Yeah. Um. Cool. Uh. I'm gonna drive forward. 
And depending on whether or not I can see that tar pit, I'm going to drive around it. Uh, so the orangish here is is the sort of tarish pit. The brown oh. is where the uh, the street lights slash. Like, oh, the tree. Okay, yeah. so I'm not going to drive into it. Oh, I see. I'm not going to drive into the tree. Yeah, I won't even make you roll for that. You you see the giant tree. Okay, I'm going to jump the curb, but stop <laughs> next to the apartment building underneath that hole. All right. You're like halfway across sort of the grass easement and the sidewalk, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, right where the ground starts to suddenly like slope up to the window. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm going to give Cyrus another uh, bardic inspiration. All right. So yeah, of these, well, most of those are still in the mix. Apparently, I want to roll threes and fours today. Yeah. All right. So, uh, the two that were fighting Lexi are very confused and uh, are going to chase after. Uh, the one that attacked, uh, or the one that Cyrus attacked, uh, can't actually get to him again, so it is going to attack Lexi. Fantastic. Only a 13 on the first one, and only a 10 on the second. Oh, that's a mess. So two could not get close enough. Uh, one misses. Let's see if this one has finally figured out that there is no screaming person. <laughs> uh, nope. Uh, he's just a, a, a simple country goat. <laughs> Most effective cantrip ever. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like lost in the mist, like... Uh, this one that Auric hit with the magic missile is very hurt, uh, but it is, it still is not going to go after Pokey. It doesn't hundred percent seem to understand what Pokey is and is going to <laughs> treat it as if it is a large, dangerous creature. And it's going to crawl through the window behind the other creature. I mean, Pokey is a large, dangerous creature. Let's be real here. <laughs> Uh, Dissonant Whispers is only for one turn, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you see the, the large creature in the window. <sighs> and there's almost like a of smoke. Um, and it turns fully around and looks at you. And it is going to leap. Uh, it is about 10, 15 feet up. Um, no, it's not how floors work. It's 20 feet up. Um, I'm going to have it make its attack roll, and then we'll see what happens. Do you know a good mechanic? A good body shop? Yeah. Well, the good news is it rolled a natural one. Uh, so we're going to say that it lands uh, to the side of Pokey, uh, since that is less harmful to you all. Uh, and it's going to kind of stumble. Um, and uh, it its tail, like, whips across and, and smashes up against the side of the car. Uh, but it it doesn't have its feet under it, and so the tail just kind of... And, and doesn't even seem to scratch the paint. I was going to say, it bounces off the tire. All right. Uh, at the top of the initiative, uh, Lexi, roll a d4. I need to get like another 10 minutes. Hmm. I think you need like another 10 minutes. One. A one. All right. Uh, Auric, it is your turn, and you need to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, good. I'm actually good at that. How does a 16 do? 
Uh, 16 is fine. The strange anxiety and fear uh, that sort of flared up uh, just a moment ago is replaced as the air changes and takes on this like this nauseating quality you are tasting the air um and it oh it's horrible but you manage to keep it together uh so what do you want to do tastes like the kitchen when mom's cooking (laughs) don't insult your mother like that you never met the woman dragon woman (laughs) anyway where am i uh, you are very close to Cyrus, uh, moving around one of the tar pits, and you are uh, 80 feet from Pokey and the large creature attacking it, and about 100-ish feet from the apartment. Okay. I will... I'll do another magic missile... I'll upcast it again to second level. All right. And one at the one in the apartment and the other three at the big one. All right. So the one in the apartment is going to take three damage. All right. And the big one takes 12 damage. Nice. Uh, The big one looks very hurt. So your your uh, magic missiles just unerringly streak uh, through this mist, fighting their targets regardless of the fog, uh, and you hear as they slam into uh, figures off ahead of you. That was action. Would you like to move or take a bonus action? I will move closer. Do my full thirty feet. I'm not going to be able to engage in melee range, but I'll get closer. All right. Very good. Uh, Cyrus, constitution check. All right, that's my third, four of the night. So a five. Do you want to? No. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat it with the... All right. Uh, so this this sudden surge of fear fades and you you don't even know why you thought you were seeing those spider creatures Um, but you are you taste this you taste the air all the way down the back of your throat and it, it has the quality not that you would know what it tastes like but you would imagine almost of of carrion or 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 vomit or that some sharp acidic burning taste all the way down the back of your throat uh you start retching and reeling uh so you still have your bonus action and you can still move but you're going to spend your action dry heaving cool Yeah, I actually have several, but I don't have anything good to do with them without an action Mm -hmm. attached. I don't really want to go get... There doesn't feel like there's anything good to do. I don't want to go... There's no point in getting closer to Lexi if I can't attack. I don't particularly want to just, like, take off and leave Lexi, though, to fight three people all on her own. Just as a... uh, something you could do with your movement, you could potentially move behind one of those tree poles and use your bonus action to hide. (sighs) 
because I could dash towards the apartment. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll move back south and hide behind that one. All right. Uh, roll a stealth check. And I would say you can roll it with advantage because there's a lot of vision obscuring happening. 19. All right. Uh, you vanish into the mist. But for the record, the other roll is a four. Jeez. <laughs> I I hate nights like that. Are you using the digital roller? I'm doing a mix of both. It's, it's about even on threes and fours for both sets. Some nights the dice just come after you. All right. Uh, Lexi, top of your turn. Constitution save. Well, gee. 19. 19. Uh, you easily shrug it off. Uh, compared to the worst things you've seen, meh, this isn't that bad. <laughs> it's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday night, you know. <laughs> All right. So what am I close to that I can hit? Right next oh, there's one right next to me. Okay. Yep. Now I see where I am. All right. So smack that bad boy. A natural 20. Dirty again. Dirty again. All right. Close. <laughs> Roll some damage. Uh, 12. All right. Uh, you finish it off. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, so you, you sort of come out of this strange moment of fear what, what am I doing? Oh, hey, look. Wham! <laughs> and just <laughs> flatten this creature uh, cartoonishly with more gore, but you have essentially turned a humanoid-shaped creature into a uh, pizza-shaped creature. Very nice. All and right. Recording. Yeah. <laughs> No. Uh, <laughs> would you like to move or take a bonus action? I was say, what are my bonus actions even? Um, raging. I was going to say two weapon fighting and raging. Yeah. <laughs> so and you've got the one big weapon. So yeah. Um. So I think I'll probably. Hmm. Well, I'm trying to think. Is like. My car is in one direction, but there are enemies closer to me in the other direction. True. So what would Lexi do? I mean, she would move, but which way would she move? Enemies behind you that made you sick. Yeah. But revenge. But revenge. <laughs> I'm going to go with revenge, so I'm going to move towards the um, towards these other two idiots. All right. Uh, do you want to move into the cloud or see if it disperses when they come at you? I I think I will stay outside of the cloud for now. All right. In that case, it is Dr. Skylark's turn. Awesome. I am going to... Um, ignore the time limit on the iPad. Um, and uh, just whispers the damn thing again. All right. 
Oh, because it's directly next to me. Oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on. Um, I'm not doing that. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna uh, cast Thunder Wave. I'm gonna, like, blast the sound up on the song and and, and let the bass just, like, boom, 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 boom. Um, and, yeah. All right, and is that a constitution save? It is. I remember my speakers in college. Uh, the bass up so I'm going to say... Make a uh, make an arcana check. Arcana check. Okay. I that's an eleven. All right. Uh, uh, Lexi, roll a uh, a d twenty uh, with a plus. We'll say a plus four modifier and this is uh pokey's constitution save <laughs> lord mm -hmm. 10 here's here's the choice i'll offer you Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Zyra decide in this moment. So you start to cast this spell. Mm. You start to infuse the the base running through the car with this thunderous energy. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a split second where you realize if you really are gonna hurt this creature, mm -hmm. you are probably also going to badly damage Pokey in the process. Are you, are you more interested in preserving Pokey or harming the creature? Why would I hurt the card? Because you're casting an area effect spell from inside the car. Okay. But all the windows are open. See, so because the force of the spell is still coming through me. Well, when did you roll the windows down? Oh, they've been down. Oh. I'd have been having you roll for the fog. Oh. I mean, all the doors opened. I figured I was okay. Well, it's... I. I... <laughs> I don't know why I would have assumed this, but I thought people were shutting them behind them. I mean, yeah, sure, but, you know. I would hope that you moved my car <laughs> once the doors were shut and not while they were wide open. If I need to, I'll, like, pop open the, the sunroof and stand up in the middle of the sunroof and cast the spell. <laughs> All right. Um... Well, it rolled a 22 on its constitution saving throw. Oh, Lord. Um, Zyra's going to get relegated to the back seat after this. <laughs> no more shot in her head. <laughs> well, it still takes damage. It takes a half of nine. All right. So you, uh, you you pop a hand up and kind of project this out through the, the sunroof uh, and it catches the creature, uh, not in full though, because you're, you're kind of aiming up and around uh, Pokey. Man, I'm really throwing off my camera when I move. Um, it takes <laughs> a solid hit. It is, it is looking quite hurt. Um, okay. So one of the creatures has disappeared into Beery's apartment. Uh, another one is going to roll again and see if it is figured out. It rolled another natural one for a total oh of God. zero. Uh, it is it is just off in the fog somewhere looking for this woman. It uh, is hell on getting this this random screaming woman. Tit. Screaming woman. 
Uh, this thing is going to move out of its area. Seriously. They move forward to attack Lexi. See, but it's fine inside it, so it's secured. Uh, your AC is 15, right, Lexi? Mm -hmm. My AC is 15. All right. Uh, the first creature does hit you with both attacks. Okay. Uh, so, two and then two. Uh, so this creature uh, but again, it tries to bite through the, the amber light coming off of you and it just barely even breaks skin. Uh, you take two points of damage from each hit. Uh, the okay, other so one attacks. Yeah. 11 on the first. 5 on the second. So the first one catches you. The second one you're ready for. And as it gets close, you just kind of body check it with the ancient brewer's mallet. And it... All right, we are down to the very injured largest one. Um, uh, Zyra, uh, you need to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. Oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> four. Uh, so you have an epiphany and your epiphany comes through suffering. Uh, whatever this mist is, seems to have this creature as one of its foci. Uh, yeah. this close, there is a sickening, it goes beyond just like a mist. There is an aura of rot and decay, uh, just radiating off of this creature. Uh, you take six necrotic damage. And it's going to try and whip its tail at you. Yeah. Uh, it only gets a nine. So it uh, it can't figure out the car. <laughs> like, it, it keeps, like, the tail seems prehensile. And it, like, tunk, hits the metal. Tunk, hits the metal again. Like, pokes at the glass. And just can't seem to figure out... It sees you, but it doesn't know what to do about it. No. For... It, it, uh, it bleats in forward. frustration. <laughs> All right. Uh, at the top of the initiative, uh, Zyra, roll a d4. Yeah. Three. Three. All right. Um, all right, uh, Auric, at the top of your turn, make a dexterity saving throw. Woohoo! 17! All right. Nice. Uh, this time you're sort of uh, expecting it, and you start to see the mist change. Um, and you actually can follow it this time. Parts of the mist suddenly like cohere, almost like they're being pulled inward and becoming thicker. And you watch these strands form. And it was the strands that hit you before that caused that gas flame. Uh, and you're able to sort of smoothly step to the side and let it flow around you. All right. So you are 55 feet from the large creature. You are 75 feet from the apartment. You are 70 feet from Lexi and the two small goats. From where I'm standing, can I see the one inside the apartment? Uh, make a perception check with... Eh, I'll say the headlights of the car are off settings. So just make a straight perception check. It was almost a 20. 14. 14. Uh, you don't see anyone in there. Not from hmm. where you're at. Unfortunate. That big one is just a big distraction, so I'm going to get rid of it with another upcast magic missile. All 
right. All of them, you get the big one. So that'll be 15 damage. Uh, how do you want to do it? <laughs> well, the first one smacks the tail off of the car. <laughs> and then one goes into the side, one whips around into the other side, and the final one goes up over and then does a cheeky little duck underneath and does an uppercut through its chin. <laughs> All right. Uh, so right. it's it's trying to swat them out of the air like bugs. And it's always just a second too slow. And, and it's just looking around. And there's a moment of very animal beach shield desperation. And the final one. Uh, and, and this sort of uh, red-black ichor just fountains. And this thing. And boom. Uh, falls to the ground next to Pokey and is gone. All right. Uh, when it dies, you actually see very clearly, uh, for the first time, the fog thins dramatically all the way around you. All right. So that was my action. With my move, I will continue moving closer to the apartment. All right. All right. Uh, Cyrus, it is your turn. All right, so what's left? Uh, what's there left? are two smaller goatish creatures, one of them very injured uh, and fighting with uh, Lexi. There's another small one that has disappeared into uh, the apartment. Okay. Uh, the one that wandered off into the mist is just gone. You don't know what's <laughs> happening over there. He may find his way back eventually. You <laughs> yeah, know. that could be interesting later. Uh, I was going to say, like, you know, a couple weeks from now, he shows up. <laughs> and I mean, like, in-game weeks, not, like, player, <laughs> not, like, session weeks. <laughs> is the... Is my hex on one of those? Uh, the one that your hex was on was killed by Lexi last turn. Okay. So one's hurt, one's not. <laughs> well, you know, it's been a rough night. And I've got, I'm hidden from both of them? Uh, yes, you're already hidden. All right, I'm going to hex the unhurt one. All right. Attack. Uh, so that's a 15 to hit. All right. So how's 21 damage sound? <laughs> uh, you obliterate it. Um, <laughs> Lexi, you you just hear like... Uh, and an arrow flies incredibly close to you and hits this thing. Uh, and there's a cacophonous burst of bird sound and like shadowy feathers raining... And the creature, its its eyes go wide, like it's seeing something that you don't. And it just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and then just goes in, in, instantly pale and falls over dead. We must hit a full garden wave in the history oh. of uh, And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head towards the apartment. All right. 
And that was the uninjured one. Yeah, yeah. just instant obliteration. Yeah. <laughs> Note to self, do not make Cyrus angry. <laughs> o plus X plus sneak attack. And it's only going to get worse. <laughs> All right, uh, it is Lexi's turn. You have one injured goat next to you, uh, and then you will have cleared the field in your immediate vicinity. Oh, we going for the goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Some of these that are dead. Whoops. Man! I don't know. Only rolled a nine. Womp womp. It does not quite hit. Yeah. Uh, this creature it is. Died. It is battered and hurt, uh, but it has a cornered animal fury. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zyra. Yeah. Um. Can I see the thing that's in the apartment? Uh, make a perception check. Oh, lovely. That's a nat 20. Oh, so it'll be a 27. All right. Uh, <coughs> you see something odd. Okay. Uh, Beery is nowhere to be seen. Um... And the creature that is inside doesn't really seem to be doing anything. It's like its goal was to get in and like now it doesn't know what to do. <laughs> okay. So the punchline is we should have just left him alone. <laughs> <laughs> um... Mm. That being said, I'm going to Dissonant Whispers it. All right. So, Wisdom Save of 15. It gets a five. <laughs> it takes. Eight psychic damage. Uh, how would you like to kill this goat? Uh, it, it realizes um, it does not belong. Um, and in its unbelonging, it ceases to exist. All right. Uh, your words touch something inside of it and convey a profound sense of wrongness. And the creature, it, it doesn't explode. It doesn't, like, dissipate. It's almost like it just fades. And is gone. Lovely. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay in the car. <laughs> Actually, no. Um, I'm not. I'm going to see if I can run up into the... Um, into the apartment. Is uh, it? Yeah, you can easily make it up there. Yes, I want to go in. All right. Uh, since you've already made a perception check and used an action, uh, I'll have you make another perception check next turn or investigation to kind of take a look around. Um, at this point, uh, uh, Cyrus and Lexi, uh, each of you just roll a, a flat d20. I got six. Twelve. Uh, so Fifteen. Uh, I guess you're close enough to. Auric, roll a d20 as well. Three? Yeah. Uh, that's all right. This was just to see which of you gets to it first. So <laughs> the this remaining goatish creature suddenly realizes that it is alone. Um, all of it, everything else is gone. The mist is clearing. It has an enraged uh, barbarian in its face. There's some kind of draconic fire creature out in the, in the distance somewhere. There's the, 
the giant metal beast that destroyed more than one of its companions uh the creature that was disgorged from the beast that seems to be like speaking unmaking into uh their very being uh and it has a sudden moment of uh existential horror uh lexi you're you're gearing up with the 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 mallet about to end this creature's life and uh suddenly there's like a a slow motion race the hammer's coming down uh (laughs) or you manage to kill the uh steal the big kill and you turn around you're like i'm gonna get this one too (laughs) firebolt is streaking through the air in slow motion uh and cyrus you just smoothly turn and uh and it almost like the firebolt is already past you and your arrow somehow just like around uh snakes like right under lexi's arm and into this thing's chest uh and you kill it right before the hammer comes down the yeah field. but it still gets smashed to pieces with the hammer <laughs> Yep. It doesn't matter if the arrow gets there first. I get to explode it. <laughs> Firebolt, on the other hand, just kind of... <laughs> yeah, just... just... <laughs> all right. Uh, you, you all have cleared the field. Um, the mist has dissipated, but the... Whatever this strange environmental effect is has not fully faded. There's still this sort of melded space happening uh at this point zyra would you would you rather make a perception check or investigation perception every single time all right uh even with that it's a 12. uh so looking around you very much have the uh the image of uh, a young woman living a fairly spartan bachelorette life um you see a uh, a love seat and a small tv uh a a low like two shelf bookshelf um there's a like futon bed in one corner uh there's a tiny generously calling it a kitchenette there's a small table for one um uh you do see uh there does seem to be a a door off into another space uh do you want to look around more in here or go go see what else there is i can clearly see the room is not having anybody in it uh you can't see or hear anyone else at this point i'm gonna go through the door all right uh, I'll assume the rest of you are are moseying that way, unless you want to investigate something else. Yeah, I'll be moseying that way. Give and everybody a chance to look around. A, uh, young woman's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything else uh, you all would like to look at? I'm going to stay in the love seat area because I'm assuming the back area is like a bedroom. <laughs> No, the futon is the bedroom. Anything else anybody wants to look at? Uh, yes. I mean, I guess I'll go to the other room too. All right. Um, uh, this room does have. Um, you do see a bed in here um there's really not much else here there's like one small dresser um let's see auric would you have shared the the pictures you got um oh yeah okay uh you all recognize there are, there's a handful of pictures uh they're actually like face down uh, you don't know if they've been knocked over by the sudden whatever that just happened here or if they were intentionally like laid flat um 
and uh, you see a couple of like pictures of of uh, Beery and friends. Um, you see several pictures that look more recent, like very recent. Uh, they're not even like framed; they're just like uh, like photo uh, photo printer prints um, of her and other what looks like Radiant Dawn people. The pictures that are down, when you lift them up, uh, you see, I guess I can quit sharing the screen. Oh. How do I unshare? Oh, whoops, I'm not sharing, I'm streaming. That's the difference. <laughs> I was like, why, why can't I fix this? There we go. Um, I probably shouldn't open my entire notes page with <laughs> with the Twitch stream running. Um, I see nothing. So uh, you see several older pictures. Uh, the oldest pictures uh, have that kind of grainy quality. They look pre-digital um, or maybe just like early digital. Uh, you see a, um, a woman in her uh, probably like her early to mid 20s um, with blonde hair, uh, slightly curly blonde hair uh, with a um, a man of, of about the same age uh, but at first it's hard to tell how old he is because his hair has a very distinct silver tint uh, almost like he's gone impossibly early gray. And you see the two of them holding up a, maybe like a two or three year old girl uh, sort of in the air between them. Um, you see a shot uh, slightly later of uh, all the same folks, a little bit older. Uh, the, the child is now more recognizably uh, Beery Caroline. Uh, it looks like she's probably in her mid-teens at that point. Uh, and in the picture, her uh, the, the blonde-haired woman is now holding um, a small, uh, blonde-headed um, infant, baby, not quite toddler, somewhere in that range, still in the, the holding uh, range. Um, there's one last picture. It looks like the most recent. Uh, it looks like Beery graduating high school. Um, the blonde woman, the hair is now going slightly gray. Uh, the small child, uh, the, the infant now looks, uh, it's like a four or five year old boy with uh, sort of brown blonde hair. Uh, he seems to be like, climbing up the side of, of Beery's back while they're trying to take this picture. Um, the man is conspicuously absent. And that's what you notice. Um, there is one more room. Uh, it looks like maybe a master bathroom uh, further in. Sure. And then check it. We did see Beery... Like, I'm forgetting what the last thing we saw was. The uh, last thing you saw before everything went strange? Mm -hmm. uh, Cyrus and... I think it was... Was it Cyrus and Oric? I think only, only Zyra was the one who caught the environment was changing. Everyone else was looking really closely at uh, Beery at the table in the apartment. Um... And with all of the distractions, it's hard to say. You don't remember if you saw her again after that. You just know that about five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Right before it went, started going weird. Yeah, that was the last you saw of her. As far her, as you know. We saw her at the table? Yeah. 
Uh, so the bathroom is is pretty plain. Um, this is not a nice apartment complex. Uh, this is honestly maybe even a little bit less nice than where Oric is staying. <laughs> uh, it's Oric's place is outdated, but it's well kept. This place is not well kept. Um, you can see little touches where it seems like she's tried to make it less worn and spartan and it's not helping very much um there's uh a a shower slash tub uh, a towel rack uh there's a small um like travel bag thing hung on the back of the door that seems to have all of her toiletries uh, there's a sink with a uh, little like cabinet space underneath, a toilet, a window. Oh, wait, no, there's no window. That's inside. Sorry, there is no window. Um, what do you want to do? I'd like to pull out the Finder Keeper and cast Locate Objects uh. on the autograph business card I gave to Beery. make an arcana check and I'm going to say with advantage because you have this item yeah thirteen thirteen so you don't get a super close read but that in and of itself is telling. Um, right now, you you were one of the ones who realized this was a, this was a demand, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, or something like it. Um, you know that this is not quite a truly extra planar space, but it's kind of halfway in between. Um, the feedback you get from the, the finder's keeper, uh, Beery is not in this sort of demi-plane anymore. Uh, she seems to be at some metaphysical distance and also some geographical distance and is moving further away fairly quickly. Okay. I don't know how to end a domain. Would I know? Uh, make a... Make an Arcana check. How's that 18 do? Uh, 18 does pretty good. So... You would know that there's a couple of different forms of this sort of thing um, most of them are caused by a specific personality it's a powerful fey using their power to pull the human world closer to their literal actual domain and fairy it's creating an overlapping space where their the territory in which they are most powerful intrudes into the mortal world um in that case, usually killing uh, or banishing the most powerful creature undoes the demand. If it is still there, uh, for the most part, there's two options left. Uh, one, it could be naturally occurring. Sometimes this just happens where there are thin places between planes. Uh, sometimes it happens where a gate is starting to form. Uh, you don't feel like that's the case. This was, this was quick. This was, this was also acted upon very quickly. Um, you think if this was sort of a gradual, natural thing, it would have been a while before creatures were in, intruding in this space. That leaves the last option. You would suspect then, in the absence of those other two, that some kind of spell or artifact is sustaining this space. Uh, you suspect that there is some kind of focus somewhere 
in this vicinity uh, that is maintaining this space. Okay. I relayed all that to the party and started looking for the focus. All right. Uh, everybody make an investigation check. 14. 17. Oh, my, oh my. 10. 20. All right. Um, so you all kind of toss the space uh, and dig through. Um, and you find... three things in the back of the top drawer of the dresser you find we'll say Oric finds this because of course he would uh, you find a it's like a holy symbol of metals woven together in in serpentine forms to create a circle huh. um, there's almost a hum as you pick it up uh, let's see and then what did the rest of you get 20. 17 uh, so Zyra and Lexi you all poke your head into the closet um, and uh, there's a lot of, of different clothes in here. Um, you get the impression of someone who dresses uh, alternately very casually uh, and maybe at a previous point somewhat conservatively. Uh, but that's not important because what you see hanging in the very back is a crisp, bright white hoodie. Uh, Cyrus, you are really, you know, it's, it's amateur stuff, drawers, closets, uh, of course there's things in there. Uh, you're digging deep. You've been like hitting all of the cabinets and the kitchenette. You've been getting like under the couch. You've been really like tearing this place up and you, uh, you notice as you're walking sort of from room to room. There's still a little bit of that mist and that fog in the air. And you wouldn't notice it except you went back and forth a couple of times. It gets thicker as you go from the kitchenette and sort of that living room space into the bedroom. It's a little bit thicker. But then into the bathroom, it's even a bit thicker there. And you look around, you're pushing stuff aside. And you open the the cabinet space under the sink. And there is a small uh, there's a small space under there. Uh, it looks like all of the cleaning things that would normally uh, and bathroom supplies will be found there have been pulled out. Uh, there is a small circle inscribed in a reddish brown something uh, inscribed into the bottom of this cabinet space um, more symbols have been painted uh, around the edge and then uh, in the interior of this circle and laying on top of it and smoking pretty noticeably now are charred uh, their bones. They look like humanoid bones and they are charred in places and in the places that it's not charred they look black and glassy. Almost like obsidian. And the whole thing is smoking gently and it smells it's that that fetid sulfurous smelled is distilled to right here. Okay. 
So bones and a circle? Yes, and the bones seem to have been arranged uh, somewhat neatly uh, to form like a structure that, that goes up. Um, and sitting on the top of it is a partially shattered skull in the same material. And it uh, seems to be a humanoid skull, but very noticeably it has sharp rows of teeth and horns that curl back. One of the horns is like partially smashed away as, along with part of the skull. All right, go on to mage hands, grab the skull, and disrupt the pile. All right. Uh, as you push it aside, uh, the second that the bones like slip past the edge of the circle, um, everything goes back. Uh, you suddenly hear uh, a lot of confused sounds, <laughs> uh, and most noticeably, someone yelling. Who parked their freaking car here? <laughs> God damn it, if I get towed. <laughs> just gotta move it before someone shows up. Uh, I assume the rest of you come take a look at this. Yeah, good. Does the, uh, the runes look anything like the rune circle that the Blake kid was doing? Uh, everyone make a religion check. Oh. 11. 8. 19. 12. Alright. So, everyone except Cyrus, you're at least able to say, this, is, this doesn't look like fey magic. You've been seeing quite a bit of this auric more than most this does not look does not look fey um cyrus you have to sort of throw your mind back and you're reminded of a briefing that you had to attend um that was actually uh something your your mom had actually helped prepare uh they had uh dredged up a bunch of artifacts and documents out of the archives, the National Archives, um, things that were old enough to be historical artifacts, but that had been considered, again, sort of mythological folklore, uh, things that were maybe invented after the fact uh, by storytellers or, uh, you know, people of a religious bent. Uh, and you remember this briefing and you saw all these examples of uh here is different kinds of historical fey artifacts uh you saw silvery uh blades that were untarnished after 1500 years uh you saw diagrams of of fey magic uh you saw illustrations of of spells that have been used during the war but they showed some other things too uh, you saw some examples of, of draconic magic, illustrations depicting uh, not dragonborn, but full dragons uh, over the land. You saw all kinds of strange things, uh, stories of um, elemental creatures, stories of uh, stout dwarves uh, from beneath the earth, of... of genies and unicorns and just all manner of unusual things and there was one item that seemed to be by itself and it was presented as the only verified surviving example of fiendish magic in the entire archive and it looked almost exactly like this And that's where we're going to stop for the week. Okay.
I like being able to share the map, but I'm going to have to figure out a way to not pull up all of my notes, like, yeah. you know, just flash everything that I've got on here. All right. Uh, so I will let you all ponder that uh, and we will come back to it next week. Yep. I'm going to kill the stream. Goodbye, Internet. Ha, ha, ha.